Well, I'm going to just say good day, everybody, or good evening, and we're going to get started now. And um, my question of the day, we're going to start every week with what's in your diffuser? I got nothing going right now, but peppermint was going earlier today because the stink bugs are back. <laughs> I'm going to pretend there's something in mine because I've got it going, but it just this minute stopped because um, <laughs> I started it earlier today and I it was um orange and vanilla and nutmeg and it smelled lovely like fall so mm. but yeah I had it going all day and it just this minute like it just went off it's so funny Kathy you got anything going yes I do I have what's called fall breeze and I made some of these up last year and I remade them this year too. And these little packets here like this. So I already refilled this, but um, it has tangerine, clove and cinnamon bark in it. And it mm -hmm. smells good, a little more on the spicier side, but it yeah. smells great. Very nice. Mary, so you got I yours going? Well, no, because I'm in my bedroom. Ah, okay, gotcha. So, and it's lavender and orange. Mm. Nice. But I'm going to put it on closer to going to bed. <laughs> right, right. Otherwise, you will have to wake you up while you're. <laughs> yeah, I'm you're like, I'm <laughs> I forgot um, about tonight. I'm in my pajamas, and I'm ready. <laughs> that's okay. Pajamas are welcome, and you know, mm. tea or wine or whatever. I don't drink much wine. I'm going to make it a thing on Tuesday nights, you know. <laughs> All right. Um, another new segment we're sticking in here is called Life Hacks. And, and um, they're just helpful hints, things that we discover along the way that might help somebody else. And I would love for this to not be just from Kathy and I, but like if you get an idea, send it to me and tell me, oh, I'm going to be on. I want to share this life hack. And I would love that, you know, because it takes the pressure off of us to come up with something every week now that we made it a segment. But Kath, what you got for us? Okay. I figured this, well, I figured this out by accident a long time ago when I first started using oils and I first started using Thieves and Thieves Veggie Wash. I accidentally grabbed the veggie wash put it in my picture because I had wiped down my stainless steel oven front with veggie wash rather than thieves cleaner. 
And then I realized it was the thieves veggie wash. And I go, oh my God, this cleans so much better on stainless steel than thieves plain cleaner. So I, you know, I tried it again. Then after that, I thought, oh, you know, let's see if this really works. Well, I did. I just like took a, um, you know, a piece of paper towel to that or a rag. And then I rubbed it, rubbed it over. Then I uh, used one to, with plain water to rinse it. And then I dried it really quickly, you know, going in the same direction the brushed stainless steel was going in. And it took out all the fingerprints. So today on my refrigerator upstairs, I grabbed my regular Thieves Cleaner, of course, squirted it on there, you know, because I thought, ah, oh, that print's going to go away. No, it didn't. So when I used the veggie wash on it, it cleaned it right up. So what I think the veggie wash gets at, you know, like on your vegetables, when they're sprayed sometimes with all kinds of crazy things, you, you don't know what they're spraying it with. It really cleans and gets that stuff off the leaves and everything of your vegetables, right? So I thought it must have some type of almost like a degreaser or de-oiler or something in it right. because the fingerprints came off from, you know, your fingers being oily, you know, just your normal skin or whatever, and touching the surface, they came off with that. Wow. So it actually works great on stainless steel. I love I, happy accidents. I use accidents. it all the time. I use it all the time. I love happy accidents. That's great that you figured that out. <laughs> okay. Our main discussion, we're continuing on menopause and hormones and especially weight gain, because the feedback that I got from other people was that, you know, the weight gain with menopause is just a pain because it it is well, resilient uh, or resistant, I should say, to coming off again. And so there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and I spent most of the day here today, like trying to come up with some things to help, um, help us understand that. So, um, one of the first things is, okay, so weight gain and menopause. Why are we gaining weight? Well, all of the usual reasons, right? More calories in than out. Um, and um, But if calories were equal, it really comes down to the food you eat, not the calories, right? Because foods heal, whole foods heal. Calories don't necessarily heal unless you're getting really high quality stuff. Um, genetics plays a part of it, any underlying medical conditions you have, any medications that you take can be causing weight gain. And specifically, they mentioned antidepressants, beta blockers, insulin, and steroids. Um, and it's not possible to directly blame medications, but it is like a contributing factor if you're taking those types of um, medications. Lifestyle is also a factor. Um, and I think that's that's a big one. Food and lifestyle is a big one. So there are endocrine disrupting chemicals in our environment, and the more you're exposed, the more they can affect and upset your balance. Um, your gut biome, which we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, a, sedan, a sedentary lifestyle. So if you're not active, if you're not at least taking walks, um, that's going to affect it. Poor sleep will affect your weight, depression, stress, uh, screen time. If you're on your phone or you're an iPad or something late in the night, that's going to affect uh, it. Like they all kind of intertwine. So that's going to affect your sleep, which is going to affect your weight. Um, we talked a little bit about this last week about the location of fat, which is the subcutaneous fat, which is just below the skin. That's what we see. That's what we can pinch. Um, and her numbers don't quite gel, but I think it's 80 to 85%, but she said 90 to 95% of our fat is that just under the skin kind of fat. Um, it's annoying. It affects our appearance but it's not necessarily harmful. The visceral fat is the fat that surrounds the body organs and it, it surrounds like the stomach, the liver, intestines and other um, abdominal organs. And that is 15 to 20% of your body fat is there. So women gain more visceral fat during menopause. 
it's concerning, it's dangerous, and it's metabolically active in harmful ways. So it's an active fat and it can lead to cardiovascular disease, heart, heart attacks and strokes. Um, it, can lead, it can affect your liver, um, type two diabetes and arthritis among many other kinds of diseases. The concerns regarding visceral fat um, that you, be, you become insulin resistant, it increases inflammation, uh, release of fatty acids into the blood will um, sprung, uh, will cause high cholesterol, high triglycerides. It has negative effects on the liver, uh, increased testosterone, increased levels of estrogen, and your BMI, which is your body mass index. A lot of times we we they tell you if you're obese or not based on that number, but that BMI is not necessarily helpful when you're trying to figure out um, visceral versus subcutaneous fat, because it, it can't differentiate between that. What I had this aha moment um, in the shower today, and I was thinking, I wonder if they, they go together. So if you have a lot of um, subcutaneous fat, does that mean your visceral fat is high too? I don't know if there's a one-to-one -one correlation. I mean, they're one is much higher than the other, but do they go up incrementally together? So I want to I want to find that out, and I forgot that I wanted to find that out until this moment. So I didn't find it out yet. Um, according to one source, there are three main things that prompts weight gain in menopause. Um, number one, your drop in estrogen level, and that. Estrogen is one of those hormones that helps to regulate your uh, metabolism, your weight, and it reduces inflammation. So during menopause, we see a drop in estrogen, which leads to faster weight gain. And um, it also can affect your joints, your ligaments, tendons, causing tension, swelling, uh, stiffness, creaking. I saw a meme today that had a picture of Captain Kangaroo and it said, if you know who this is, your joints ache in the morning. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't ache. I think maybe I take the right supplements for that. But, um, and it also, the estrogen, the drop in estrogen also plays havoc with the body's production of collagen, which is really important um, in the building of joint cartilage and also your skin health, your hair, nails, all of that. And if there's time, we're gonna talk a little bit about collagen later, later on. Um, cause number two is inflammation. And inflammation is, goes back to everything. Everything is about inflammation and gut health, you know, so, and hormones. So all those things are playing against us. Um, so a drop in estrogen can cause higher inflammation levels. High inflammation levels cause um, expanded fat cells, increased fat absorption, and weight gain. Um, and as time goes on, women may also start to notice they feel more aches and pains in areas like knees, shoulders, uh, neck, elbows, hands than they used to. Um, and so I I got a lot of things for inflammation today. So we're going to talk about that. Cause number three is bad gut bacteria. So it all begins in our gut. We've said that over and over and over again, as our, as we research, as we talk that, you know, your good health begins in your gut and it's directly related to what you eat. So a drop in estrogen uh, during menopause can cause bad bacteria to grow quicker in the gut, which may also lead to gut inflammation and leaky gut syndrome. Um, and it's why it's common to have belly bloating, weight gain, and other digestive issues during menopause. So those are the three biggies. And But there's ways to fix it. There's ways to balance things. Um, does anybody feel like they suffer from any of these? Or I think it's a, it's hard to tell like what your root cause is, but... Um, I, for one, have the menopot. Like it is not even just a pot. It's like 
a kettle drum. It's huge. You know, like I just, I feel today I was looking at myself as I was getting in the shower. I was like, boy, if I didn't have that, I would, I, I'd have like 30 pounds off of me. I think I'd feel so much better. Um, anybody else feel that, that unexplained, it feels unexplained weight gain that you just can't get rid of in, in those areas. So, um, one area is the bat wings. <laughs> I was just going to mention that bingo arms. Yep. Yeah. I got, I have good specimen of bingo arms. Um, but every day I do exercises. I get up like this and do this because one, we talked a long time ago about how, um, your lymph nodes need exercise. And I kind of just do some things for about five, five minutes before I get out of bed. Like I'm sitting on the edge of the bed. Um, and that helps, but I'm also working my arms, to get rid of my wings. Um, I don't need to fly. That and uh, and the belly; those are the two prime areas. Me too. Same places. And my back. Yeah. Back fat. Back fat. Back fat. You know, I'm not worried about my back. Back. If I could fix the front, I'd be okay. <laughs> I don't Mine kind of evenly goes all the way around, I think. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, so, uh, inflam wait, what was the first one we talked about? Oh, estrogen. So ways to balance estrogen. Um, curcumin is a phytoestrogen, and that one is a great way to help rebalance estrogen, um, which is the main active ingredient found in turmeric. So um, turmeric is absolutely amazing. Um, there's some recipes for golden milk. Gee, that should have been my recipe today. A golden, golden milk. Mm -hmm. I think it's a warm milk. I have, I have like a spice mix that I got at one of those stores when we were shopping down in, in the villages. Um, but I, I haven't tried it yet. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the taste of turmeric. So I use it in everything just to add more, but I haven't actually, I, I, I have a food problem because I love food so much that I don't want to put something in my mouth that's going to not taste good. <laughs> so if I think it's going to taste bad, it takes a long time for me to try it, like mind-wise. Um, so the natural phytoestrogens like curcumin have been recommended for its ability to manage estrogen levels without other side effects. Um, food is another big thing for balancing your estrogen. So vegetarians actually have a lower est estradiol, estradiol, I don't know how you say that. It's not estrogen, it's a type of estrogen or a part Estro of estrogen. Estrodiol? Estrodiol, estrogen. Yes, T-R-O-D-I-O-L or something like that. D-I-O-L, yeah. Yeah, I think it's um, estrodiol. So vegetarians have a lower estradiol levels um, lifelong vegetarians also have a lower risk of breast cancer, and there's a correlation there. Um, and they mentioned a lot of Japanese women, they eat a lot more soy, like whole soy, not stuff that's been processed, but, and less meat, they eat less fat and more fiber. And, um, Japanese women like don't have, uh, any menopausal symptoms at all. Like they, they rarely get it once upon a time, but now as they're adopting Western ways, they're starting to get it. So it's kind of funny. Um, possible gluten intolerance can really mess things up. And I found this amazing. They say at least 3 million Americans have celiac disease and only 3% of that has been diagnosed. 97% of people with celiac disease have not been diagnosed. And so they're living with it and not understanding it and not understanding the symptoms and why they have those symptoms. But 18 million Americans have gluten intolerance. And I think it's the same idea as that most people don't realize. Um, because they don't, with a gluten intolerance, you don't have an immune response. Celiacs, there's an, it's like an immune, autoimmune disease. Um, but you don't get that immune response 
but you suffer and it depends on your sensitivity. So it depends on how much gluten you have and, and what kind of gluten you might have. So gluten can be responsible for diarrhea, abdominal pain, bloating, and especially in women, bone loss, irregular menstrual cycles, mm -hmm we're past that, uh, difficulty getting pregnant, altered estrogen levels. I always knew there's something going on because there's so many people, um, dealing with inf infertility lately. I feel, you know, and it's either messing with your, um, endocrine system with those chemicals or what you're eating. But I didn't realize that it could be a gluten intolerance that is preventing women from getting pregnant. And it's probably um, both. You're right. Yeah. Um, and it, it can, yeah, it, it alters the estrogen level. So people it's difficult to getting pregnant, um, diminished ovarian reserve. I'm not sure what that means. It sounds like maybe your eggs start disappearing or you have less. I don't know. Um, so, you know, if you have, if you have abdominal regular abdominal issues, then that's something to have a conversation with your doctor about. But as we found out from Jesse last week, I think giving up gluten or at least, you know, pausing for a while, or maybe even just decreasing your intake of gluten could really have um, a big effect on your, on your body. And the thing is, is like, for me, and I think a lot of people are like this, like, you hear this information and you go, oh, the answer to my prayers. But then like that piece of bread and butter just walks by and you're good. Like, I, I have a hard time following through on certain things. So other changes, food-wide changes of regarding estrogen would be avoiding coffee and caffeine. Oh no, we can't take away coffee. <laughs> see that's Sorry, where you but see don't but you can't. drink don't you drink decaf yes i do okay so you're okay except oh, for okay. i heard some things about decaf and how it's decaffeinated and so you're it's done i buy an organic coffee does that help i don't know probably um <laughs> so relative to um decaffeination water decaffeinated is the best way over chemical decaffeinated mm -hmm. But the only one that I found, and I'm sure there's more that exists, but over at Whole Foods, there's a buzz free, it's called, and um, it's water decaffeinated. Okay. Thank you. That's good to I'll know. Check that out. I had been drinking a low acid coffee um, because I had stomach issues, but I have given up caffeine since Friday or Saturday of last week. So I have decaf, I have my decaf, um, not coffee, but Earl Grey. And I have that with my collagen in it. And that's what I, and I only had a headache one day. So I'm okay. I can deal with this. Um, except for I still have to make coffee for my husband. So it's kind of a pain. Um, okay, so changes, avoid coffee, caffeine, um, cut out gluten. And so I, that might be a good thing. Eat more whole soy. Flax seeds are good. They add fiber and they're really good for your digestive system. I think we mentioned some of these lists last week. Um, orgasm more. <laughs> I did mention that. <laughs> yeah, I did. I guess, you know, okay, we won't go there. Um, be careful how you exercise. We talked about how exercise can raise your cortisol levels, which is another hormone, and that can cause you out of balance. So if you're if you're doing too much and exercising too hard, that's that's going to raise your cortisol, and it, it actually leads to weight gain instead of what you're hoping to accomplish. Um, so the one of the things that I I can't remember which author said that, but like just walking just taking a walk, um, a brisk walk three times a week is, is good for you, really good for you. And it's not gonna raise those cortisol levels. Um, other things that could help, ac acupuncture, uh, pomegranate, vitamin E, magnesium. There's an herb called maca. Anybody know about that one? Maca. I think I tried it like 
I, I started menopause 20 years ago. So I think I tried that along the way, but I didn't find that it helped. Uh, red ginseng reduces hot flashes. I might have to get me some of that. Um, and there's a rhubarb supplement called phytoestrol. And that's supposed to be very helpful. Excuse me, um, St. John's wort and black hohosh, that combination is good. And even valerian is good. That one you want to take at night though, right? Because it can also help you sleep. Um, I found this piece very interesting. Women who have hot flashes have half the risk of developing breast, breast cancer compared with women who have never had hot flashes. In fact, the worse the hot flash, the lower the risk. I'm never going to get breast cancer. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, additionally, women with hot flashes in early perimenopause were 11% less likely to have a heart attack or stroke. So I guess I can put up with them. Um, okay. So that's about estrogen. So it's it's hard to know if your estrogen estrogen level is off unless you're really intuitive with your body and you understand these symptoms. But you can get tested for it, um, which is something I'm going to do next month. I have my regular blood work and I ask my doctor to add on some hormone testing so I can see where my levels are and maybe come to a natural solution for some of my menopause symptoms, right? Um, the other, now I'm going to talk about um, inflammation and Kathy, jump in if you ever, if you have anything, but, um, so to, to reduce inflammation again, it's back to lifestyle changes. It's you are what you eat. So, um, the funny thing is, is like, even if you're thin, you can benefit from this. They had a study with 40 healthy female athletes. And they put them on like a Mediterranean diet and really monitored them. And uh, that actually further reduced their fat and inflammation in their bodies, even if they were already considered healthy. So I have a, a graphic to share. I just have to figure out where it is on this. Um, I will see if I can find it. I don't have all of them popped up, I don't think. I decided that whiteboard wasn't working. <laughs> you know, last week when we tried to do that, it was it was very weird. I don't know why, but I've got two computer files open. Oh my goodness. I I prepare for this, but then you have all of these, I have all these windows open and they don't want to. They don't want to sit where they're supposed to sit, so it's hard to find them. Okay, um, I gotta, I gotta stop it again because it didn't pop up now that I found it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna share and I'm gonna stop sharing because you don't need to see certain things. Let me see if I can find it now. There it is. <laughs> okay, so this is just. Um, the hormone balancing plate. Uh, this is a little bit different than another source that I found, which said that half of your plate should be non should be fruits and, and vegetables. Instead of 40%, they have 50%, but they don't put fat in theirs. And the they said a quarter of it should be lean protein and a quarter grains. So those are similar, but the fat wasn't in there before. So it could be that the fat is really important for hormone balancing, healthy fats like avocado and uh, coconut oil and things like that. So, uh, all right, done with that one. Uh, the Mediterranean diet is a real good one for balancing hormones, fruits and veggies, whole grains, beans, plant-based proteins, herbs and spices. And I know in the Mediterranean diet, um, fatty fish is also included in there. Um, and they, they, have, they rarely have meat, like the chicken and the beef and the stuff like that, but it's, it's really based on, um, a true Mediterranean is based on plant-based with some of that fatty fish in there. The DASH diet, which is which is 
stands for dietary approaches to reduce hypertension. So it's going to reduce your blood pressure as well. And it's very, very similar to the Mediterranean. Um, no unprocessed foods, or I'm sorry, no processed foods. They want just unprocessed foods, fruits and veggies, whole grains, lean proteins. Um, adding... Did you hear that squeak? Came out of my throat. That was weird. Um, Superfoods are good to add to your diet that will help um, fight inflammation. Bone broth, garlic, cinnamon, ginger, fatty fish like salmon, turmeric, leafy greens, broccoli, coconut oil, but you have to be careful about coconut oil because it is a saturated fat. So you can't have too much of that. Berries, chia seeds, and something called moringa. And um, moringa has the ability to regulate glucose, glucose levels. Um, so they have an even anti, uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, an even stronger anti-inflammatory benefit than curcum curcumin. Um, and they have several essential minerals like iron. Um, and during menopause, your iron levels drop, which causes the mood swings and the brain fog. So getting more iron is a good idea. And they Megan, suggest sorry. Moringa, M-O-R-I-N-G-A. And they said, have at least 350 milligrams oh. of Moringa leaf every day. So did you say that that, that is, has a lot of iron in it, extra iron in it? Has some, yeah. Okay, because I know with people with certain types of cancer, because they're, some of them have bleeding tumors, they yeah. give them iron. And so if they give them the iron supplement can cause constipation. So as part of that um, cancer thing I was listening to today, they did mention Moringa uh -huh. and they said iron that does not cause constipation like an iron supplement does. Yeah. Just an FYI. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, that's fine. I had never heard of it until today. I, I didn't hear told, of it until today either until I listened to that episode. Oh, okay. Well, that's weird. I know. We're both on the same Maybe page. We the better way. look for Moringa. Um, truth be told, it came up as a Facebook ad for a, um, you know, how you get those ads and they want you to buy something and they tell you all this information and then they say, we've got the solution, which is the product they want you to buy. So this was part of that, that they looked at, at um, you know, their, theirs has some Moringa in there and turmeric and something else. So um, the other three that are good are beets, olive oil, and nuts. So all of those are considered superfoods for battling inflammation. Things to avoid, this is, this is a shorter list, vegetable oils, margarines, and spreads with the partially hydrogenated oil. Processed cheese, like American cheese, like which I don't know if there is such a thing as American cheese. I think American cheese is just a processed thing. I, I think just the cheese that comes in those cheese slices that are individually wrapped. Yeah. And I call them plastic cheeses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes they're good, but they're not good for you. Right. Um, whole milk and even 2% milk is not good for inflammation. Cream cheese is not good. Fatty meats, cereals with added sugar, uh, pre-seasoned foods and seasoning mixes. You have to be really careful about those because they usually contain a lot of sodium. In fact, um, I'll just mention this as a side thing, like going on a whole food plant-based diet, we wanted a hamburger. So we bought some of those hamburger beyond burger things way too much sodium in those. They're just, that's a processed food. So you're not doing yourself any favors. You might as well just eat the meat. Um, full fat, sugary yogurt. Yogurt is good. Full fat, not good. Sugar, like any sugar added, or even sometimes the fruit at the bottom, like there's still added um, sugar in there. So you have to watch the carb um, con content in those. And then of course, white bread and refined carbs like pasta and white, white rice. Um, the other three things are all the things that are, we know we should do and it's hard to do. Exercise, 
just do it, right? Um, reduce your stress and sleep seven to eight hours nightly. If you have less than six hours of sleep, it triggers inflammation and can raise your risk for metabolic issues that lead to obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, dementia, Alzheimer's, all that good stuff. Um, one of the things they said about exercise is that if, and I think this is for like somebody who really exercises, um, the athletes, like they said, if you just have some minor aches and pains because you were working out so hard, don't take ibuprofen. They don't want you to take that for minor workout pains. Um, choose like a mentholated gel or something like that. Um, did I write down the reason why? No. Um, and I can can't ibuprofen block or inhibit something else in your body? I, that... I think so, but I can't remember. I didn't write enough notes about that unless I, I wrote it here. And I can't remember some stuff I wrote in my book and sometimes, okay. The workout becomes less effective um, with ibuprofen. Hmm. Like, cause it has to, your body has to counter it to, to work. It. I don't know exactly. I didn't write enough notes on that. It came from, I did actually write a note and what page it was on. So I'll I will look at that later and um, when you're talking about something and then I'll interject in why. I'll find the why on that one. All right, the last thing that they mentioned as one of the main offenders for weight gain and menopause was the gut bacteria. And we've talked about that over and over again, how everything starts in your gut. Everything is related, your inflammation, your gut and your hormones, everything works together. So things to improve the, the bacteria, probiotics are great for strengthening the gut at the population with good bacteria. In fact, if you're over on antibiotics, you need to definitely take an, a probiotic and maybe even you know a stronger one or take two or whatever, but not at the same time. They have to be separated by like three hours. Um, pickles. Kimchi, sauerkraut, kefir are all rich in probiotics, and they introduce, again, good bacteria into the gut. Um, and there are also some specific bacteria strains that have shown to um, kind of spur some weight loss. And one is called Lactobacillus gasseri. Um, and the other one is... Bre uh, Bevido bacterium breve. And so, especially with this last one, they gave, um, they did a study on this and they gave people um, this, you know, some of them got this bacteria stream, some got a placebo um, and they were looking at the visceral fat area. Um, and in the placebo group, the visceral fat area significantly increased and um, with no significant change was observed in the B3 group, which is the, um, the one getting the, the probiotic. The body fat mass and percent body fat were significantly lower in the group that was getting the uh, probiotics than in the placebo group. So, um, they, it was just one of those things that they were trying to show that that particular strain. So there's two, they called it uh, L, what they, L Gassiri and B Breve is what those two were. And I looked and one of, one of my probiotic has the first one, the Gass, Lactobacillus Gassiri, but it doesn't have the second one. So I don't know, maybe I'll shop around and see. So those are the things that I found about weight gain in general. The three main offenders, again, are um, your inflammation, your gut health, and your low estrogen. And those are some things that you can do to fix that a little bit. Um, now, we also had a conversation last, a couple, well, before we started talking last week, Kathy and I were talking about ginger. And I don't remember how it came up, but my question was, was there a connection between ginger and hormones? 
What'd you find out, Kath? <laughs> As a matter of fact, there is. <laughs> ginger actually is, um, I cut a piece of ginger root every day and put it in my um, my protein shake along with my blueberries and uh, collagen goes in there and, um, you know, things like that. I pack my um, protein shake with all of that and I have that every morning. And so um, in reading the article on ginger here, it does have a lot of benefits because ginger is packed with antioxidants and it has over 50 different types of antioxidants in it. So because of all the antioxidants, it helps the bo our body deal with oxidative stress and it helps us to combat inflammation. So we talked about inflammation in the body and it's connected in your gut and to everything. And then I just want to throw out this one little fact I learned today too, while listening to the um, cancer uh, series I'm listening to today was last day. They mentioned, one of the doctors mentioned that our primitive gut are, was really formed like basically right after the sperm and egg get together as it's traveling through the fallopian tube and being implanted in your uterus. The primitive gut is one of the first things that develops. And so all your organs are related to that because it kind of stems off of that is what this belief is. And so there's a doctor that works. He's a, um, an, like an integrative oncologist. And I forgot his name. I don't have it right in front of me, but I did write it down somewhere. Um, he did uh, some kind of studies with his patients. And he found that when, um, you know, people have certain types of cancers, and he did a study on women with breast cancer, that each of those women had an area of either their colon or the stomach that had an issue with it. And that's, he was relating that all, you know, so many percentage of the women that had breast cancer had the same issue in their, their gut or their colon. I can't remember if it was in the descending colon or if it was in part of the stomach, because he talked about a couple of different studies that they did. And so I thought that was really, you know, really something. And, and he was trying to say, that's how, you know, things are related. So if you have a, a certain issue in a different part of your gut. It could mean lung cancer or it could mean, you know, whatever organ that developed from that area of the primitive gut. But anyways, so there are a lot of benefits to having ginger or incorporated in your body because it helps to boost your metabolism, which could help with weight gain with menopause. Yeah. Yep. It supports energy production. It can support your immune system. It lowers the hist histamine levels in your system. And of course, it helps support your digestive system. We know that it helps with queasiness and you know other digestive related issues. And it also has anti-spasmatic -spas properties, um, which can help with stressed muscles from working out or whatever. And it helps to alleviate cramps in your muscles as well. So um, ginger helps promote your lymphatic flow to, you know, to drain the drainage of your lymphatic um, fluids. So what that can help is um, it can help with detoxing your system too, you know, along with when you're doing your dry brushing or moving around and exercising, that ginger will also help that flow more freely. So when you're doing that, you can get rid of the toxins in your system. It also promotes good circulation. And again, it works as a diuretic to get rid of, you know, get that fluid moving and get rid of those toxins out of your system. So it does help boost your immunity. And what it does is it um, helps through increasing your immunoglobulins. Those are... Um, That's what absorbs... Help, or yeah, they're them. antibodies. IgM, IgG um, are the you know, the little letters that represent uh, the type of immunoglobulin it is, but they are antibodies. So if the, they did a study that shows that if your immunoglobulins are a little bit elevated or whatever, that shows that um, ginger is helping that 
helping you to fight infections and other things in that respect. But if it goes, you don't want it to go too high or too low because that'll cause other issues on either, either side of the spectrum. So it isn't always the more the better with the um, immunoglobulins, but it does, you know, if you're at that good level, it helps to fight bacteria and viruses. So um, it, ginger is also good for digestion, your digestive health. So it helps you with your saliva production to get things moving and with digestion going through your system. It supports emptying your stomach, you know, all the food out of your stomach where the process of digestion is starting there and occurring. It eases indigestion. It stimulates your bio bile secretions. It can help lower inflammation in your system. And we all know the root cause of everything seems to be inflammation and gut health. So if you can lower that in your gut, maybe that can help everything else too, you know? And it fights against cancer cells in your colon. Ginger can help fight against cancer cells. Um, and the way it, it also helps balance your hormones. It's beneficial for your thyroid, your insulin levels, and it helps in lowering testosterone as well. If you have too much in your system, it helps put a balance in there. Um, so it is, it has anti-inflammatory actions to help your hormones stay balanced or try to keep them balanced. Uh, it also helps with your thyroid too. And I, I never even associated ginger to thyroid. I knew with the gut and the digestive system. So this is something I didn't know, but it helps to st stabilize the thyroid through the anti-inflammatory effects, which can reduce the risk of developing either an underactive or an overactive thyroid. It is important when it, imply, when it applies to autoimmune conditions. So ginger will decrease the pro-inflammatory cytokines and the Th17 cells, which I have no idea what those are, but, <laughs> and it also can protect your thyroid from BPA exposure. So anything plastic, you know, like the lids of the coffee cups, that's BPA. And you know, when you add heat to that, it releases even more, just like when you have your bottle of water in the car, if you're using a plastic yeah. bottle, how it leaches all that stuff off, the BPA and whatever else is in there. Basically, you're doing the same thing by drinking your coffee with that plastic lid on. I need so to it add ginger. I need to add ginger to the superfoods list. Yeah, I just I just cut a chunk off and I cut off the outside part of it and I throw yeah, it in there. What about an inch or so, or how much? About an inch. Yeah, that's and actually they did tell us that as well um, at the cancer clinic my husband went to in Arizona in two thousand. I don't know what it was, maybe two thousand fifteen. I think we were there. Do you taste and, it at all? In your, no, 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 because I have my protein powder in there. I throw in my you know berries and I throw in a half of an avocado in there for good fats in there right. and you can put a little you know of your uh coconut oil in there if you want to but I use the avocado I think yeah, that's I would use more beneficial I I personally think it's more beneficial for me so yeah I've been using that but it does help also um to help regulate your insulin levels so it's um it helps your insulin helps if you are developing insulin resistance mm -hmm. and heading toward type two diabetes. So it can help it reduce your fasting blood sugar as well as your A1C. So that's, that's good news for diabetes, for diabetics, yeah. you know, and it can help balance your sugar, um, helps balance your sugar as well as inflammation. And then again, it, uh, it says it can help with, um, reducing your symptoms of menopause, such as hot flashes, night sweats, and, you know, helping them, you know, stay calm down more than, than anything. Well, we should have led with you. It sounds like ginger is gonna, you know, solve all my problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing to add. I don't know that it'll solve all your problems. But it <laughs> what is kind of problems do you think I have? <laughs> well, you named like 
hot flashes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking because I had, nope, okay. I had a recipe for like a little capsule using essential oils and I thought there was ginger in there, but um, I think I also did some research to come up with those. So I think if I were to do that again, I would add ginger to that for balancing insulin. So I just wanted to check that out. Okay, we're almost, we're getting down there today. And I, I apologize. I feel like Kathy and I had to do some preparation because we're not sure who's going to come on. And if it's just us, we don't have enough to say to each other. So we we'll do a little bit of research, but as we go along with um, each week, what I, my plan is, is that we have more conversation. We involve you more and, and it's just not us talking because one, I don't want to work that hard. Um, I spend the whole day at my desk reading and taking notes. Um, and I want to have a conversation because it's no fun to just sit there and listen to somebody. Blah, 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 blah. You tune out after a while. I know it. Um, but the last thing on the list was collagen. And we put this off from last week. And so I didn't know about collagen. Do you know about collagen, Gail? Do you take collagen? Yeah, so, so I learned about collagen because I went to a natural path and um, basically used a Zytos and most of us within Young Living know about Zyto. Right. And um, it went through and analyzed um, the frequencies in my body, um, came up with uh, a plan. And it was really the interpretation more than just the numbers that print out. Mm -hmm. But I was like way out of whack with uh, numbers because um, stasis was like not seven to nine and I started out at like I don't know 32 or something like that wow so and I had parasites I had a whole bunch of issues but um she introduced me to collagen and um her preference was the collagen you can get it in health food stores too but you can get it at Costco and it's a lot cheaper at Costco mm -hmm. um so she recommended a scoop of the um, the original, which is non-flavored, and then like a half a scoop of the chocolate, which has cocoa in it, um, a little bit of stevia sweetener. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, and it, I found that it mixes better with hot uh, rather than cold liquids. Mm -hmm. um, but the chocolate, I really need a lot more room in my cup to stir it because that cocoa powder does not like to dissolve very easily, but wow. it tastes delicious. <laughs> Good to Do you know. know the name of that one from Costco because Linda and I both use the okay, same let me, one. Let me go um, to the I'm refrigerator here. Linda. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Well, while she's getting that, um, so collagen is all about your skin elasticity and your joint health. And there's reasonable evidence that they help maintain hydrated skin, relieve osteoarthritis pain. And um, there is more research needed into less well understood benefits, such as lowering blood pressure and blood sugar levels. But some of the common things that you might expect from taking collagen is stronger bones, skin elasticity and hydration improve, thicker hair, healthier nails, reduced osteoarthritis pain, and increased muscle mass. Um, when I was looking there, the potential risks of using collagen supplements, they're rare. Like there's almost, they're non-existent. They didn't even give that much time to it. You know, they said, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you may want to hold off, but for most people, it's not going to do anything. Um, and they also said that you can get some of those, some collagen, like to produce collagen in your body. Um, your body puts amino acids, glycine and proline together with other amino acids, including vitamin C, zinc, and copper. So you can help your body produce more collagen by eating lots of glycine and proline rich foods like chicken, beef, fish, dairy, eggs, and beans. But not all those things are going to jive with what we said before. So I think you have to be careful. Um, so 
collagen is is an improvement and I got my dad taking it because he went to the doctors yesterday and I said, be sure to ask your doctor if you should be taking collagen. And they had a conversation and she said to him, well, I take it. So that was good enough for him. So if I had told him to take it, he would have ignored me. But the doctor said, yeah, it's a good idea. Couldn't hurt. He's going to take, he already, he went to the store on the way home and bought some. So I'm happy for him. What you got, Gail? What kind? Okay, I'm going to try to switch over my camera here. Oh, there we That's go. That's exactly what we use. That's what we take. Yep. yep. I get so it on it's Amazon. Yeah. It's a lot. I don't know about the Amazon price, but I know that it's a lot cheaper than if I get it from Whole Foods or Fresh Time because yeah, it's a Whole smaller Foods container. Smart. Yeah. And in fact, they've, they've got it on sale right now um, at Costco through the 25th if you have a Costco membership. Yep. And how much, how much is it? I don't remember. Oh, okay. I don't remember either. I just I saw just... it there today too. I didn't need to get any today, but... I did see that that they had the one with the blue label, not the chocolate one, though. Yeah, okay. I bought the chocolate one. Um, I, but I, I, the one too. I set it. I set it aside because I'm doing the Young Living one now. Except for I was very confused about that. Today was the first day I took the Young Living one, um, and it was uh, you only use one scoop of it. And I was like, wait a minute. And I'm looking at the nutritional information and it was really hard to compare. So I've been taking two scoops of the vital one. So right, two scoops in it. And I said, well, if I finish it early, that's okay. Then I can get to the chocolate one. Um, so I'll share my screen really quickly because this is, um, I paid $40 for it. You can put oh, it no. on 40, but this is two pounds. Yeah, this is, oh, okay. So this one is 24 ounces, a pound and a half. Okay. But I, I want to think it was um, less than 30. Okay. I don't have a Costco next to me, so I can't. Is that on Amazon? Okay. This was no. on Amazon. This one yeah. I have here. Amazon, sorry. So that's what, that's what I just bought. I haven't opened yet. So like I said, when you open it and use it, if, um, if it works best in warm rather than cold drinks, and if you can whisk it in, or if you have a blender, that would, that would help to get that all mixed in. Yeah. I, I haven't I just, tried the chocolate, but I've, I've tried this one. So, um, that one goes in quite easily. Yeah, and this dissolved. one this one disappears. I don't even have to stir it really. This is a pound and a half for thirty four. So yeah, is that what you have? Nineteen point three ounces. Yep. No, I have a pound and a half, but it says twenty four ounces. Oh, or six or six hundred and eighty grams. Oh, okay. So that is a good price. That is a good price. Um, but yeah, benefits. You should use that. Okay, we're gonna go over tonight because now uh, the last, well, we have a couple of other segments. This is a quickie, this is a recipe share. So tonight I'm gonna to share with you my recipe for a vegan shepherd's pie. And the non-vegans in my life loved this. So it is delicious. And, oh, I forgot I was gonna share something else with you. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull it up now. Hold on a second. All right. Um, do you see it? Do you see yeah. my face? Okay. So this is day one of collagen. This is day 17. And this is day 25, maybe. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference there with wrinkles, maybe slightly. This seems like it's more wrinkled here. Mm -hmm. But... I, I was going to say around your eyes, maybe a little bit in here too, right? Yeah, you know, maybe. It may be too like soon. That. I don't know. But I thought I would just kind of check it out and see. But um, yeah, so that's that's collagen. Um, okay, so the recipe, let me pull that open and share that with you. 
and I'll, I'll post like this you? as well. So okay, good. Really small, but I'll post it. So um, I adapted this recipe. Somebody else wrote it, um, but it's it's made with brown lentils and walnuts and mushrooms, and that tastes very meaty. It takes the place of um, the ground beef that you would have in there, and you're flavoring it with red wine. Um, absolutely amazing. Oh, maybe next week or the week after I'll share my veggie broth. I, I found a recipe for veggie broth, which is a mix. And then you mix hot water with it when you want it. So you don't have to lug home the big containers of broth, you know, when you're going to make a soup or something like that. I have it all in a little mason jar and one teaspoon equals one cup of water. You mix it together and, um, it, I put it in my soups and my gravies and things like that. It's been great. So, um, so this has, this was the bottom layer. So this, all of this is um, like the meaty part. And then the middle vegetable layer, which is um, onion, carrots, frozen peas and frozen corn and cashew milk. So cashew milk, um, you blend one cup of cashews with uh, like a cup and a half of water in the Vitamix. Uh, you can soak it first to make it a little easier if your blender isn't as strong. And then you, I mixed the cashew cream, cashew milk in with the vegetables in that middle layer. And then at the top is the mashed potato la la layer. And um, you put that on top and then you bake it all. And it doesn't even need a crust. Like you don't need the crust part of it, but you could put a crust if you wanted to. You could, you know, it, the thing about the crust is usually crusts are made with, you know, whole flour or, pro, you know, what is that called? Um, the the white stuff, the white- Crisco or spry or whatever they call yeah, that. all that stuff you shouldn't. So it's better to leave it out. So, but I will, I will post this for you because that's my version of it. And mine is like using that cashew cream in, in the different pieces. Now I made my potatoes like the day before when I made it and then they got a little dry. So I just mixed some of that cashew milk in there. I made a little bit extra and put it in there. Um, I've got two things of cashew milk in my, or cashew cream in my refrigerator and I'm not drinking coffee anymore. And it doesn't really taste good in my tea. <laughs> So I'm like, I guess I don't have to make that for a while. I better start using it in my cooking. Um, all right. So what's up for next week? Um, I, again, have one more thing to share with you if I can find it, what I did with it. Everything is in my way. I, every, it's, I got 150 windows open here and they're all in the way. It won't let me find what I want. Um, that's in the way too. Right, where is, okay, here it is. And screen sharing again, didn't pop up, come on. Oh man, it won't let me do it. I have to, I have to stop and start again because it wasn't there. I'm so sorry. Okay, so next week we're going to talk about living your best life. And I worked all day when I wasn't reading and writing, I was putting this together. So talking about the healthy me, physical health, emotional, mental, spiritual, social, the parts of the physical health with your diet, exercise, your sleep. Um, and I know there's things missing here. So I want to talk about this and talk about areas where we're, we might be um, needing some help. And maybe those will be the direction we go on future zoom chats so um that's that's that and i'll leave you with a piece of information a piece of inspiration gotta wait for it to open though okay um a reminder that uh you can always watch replays of this on Facebook, Living Well and Wise, or on YouTube, Linda Loves Lavender under Empowered uh, Living. And I made this for myself and put it on the refrigerator um, to move, just get moving, just move. 
and once in a while get your heart rate going um i i don't run so that's a lie that first one but getting your 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 heart uh, rate going up and then getting off the couch which is sofas sugar oil fats alcohol and salt all of those things are going to age you i think if we put it like that to younger people maybe they wouldn't drink so much and and not care about what goes in their body so much because it's it's not just about being healthy or not healthy but it's it ages you if you continue to uh, have those bad lifestyle choices so uh anything else kath you want to leave us with oh whole food plant-based diet i have been, have been finding a lot of recipes on a new website or not website um facebook page uh i shared one with you guys before and they kind of closed shop i don't know where they went but another one popped up and it's just about recipes and they're whole food plant-based no oil recipes and there's some really good stuff up there whoever's doing this like is talented in the kitchen with this stuff so i will uh post the link for that for you guys as well because um even if once you know once or twice a week you decide to have a meatless meal it's a great source for recipes for doing things like that so so now kathy sorry got anything to close with nope <laughs> What about what about Mary or Gail? Well, I was just going to comment on that last graphic that you had up there that uh -huh. the anti-aging um, one that was missing was smoking. My daughter gave up smoking because she didn't want to have aged skin. Oh, yeah. And um, all the older ladies that had smoked all the time looked old. Right. So, um, so she gave it up quite young. Yeah. And you can fix that, you know, like if you, even if you've been smoking for 20 or 30 years and you give it up, your skin will rejuvenate and will, it will help. Um, and, and you'll look better just giving it up. Um, you know, I think my, the harder type old skin to get rid of or to rejuvenate is if you spent so much time in the sun yeah. over years and years and years, Yeah, yeah. that's, I think harder to rejuvenate that skin with elderly women than maybe the smoking one. Right. And if you're smoking and sitting out in the sun, that's really not good. You're going to look old. You older than old. your years. Before your time. Before yes. Your time. I think I said that last week that my grandmother, she died when she was 64, but gosh darn it, when she was 50, she looked old. You know, she, she looked ancient to me always um so it's it's all about you know when you know better do better right and educate yourself so that you can do better so that you can take responsibility for your own life and and your own health because the doctors aren't going to do it for you they it's like Absolutely not. cookie cutter it's cookie cutter doctoring nowadays right so, and they only know what they know they only it, know what they're right. taught in school, right? right, right. And follow the playbook that and, they were taught I mean, in school. I want to I want to defend them just a little bit that the life of a doctor must be incredibly busy, and you see, you know, so many different people throughout the day that there's probably not a whole heck of a lot of time for learning more. And so, you know, it, it's easy to fall into that lifestyle. And it's like, okay, I'm going to go home and relax with a glass of wine and my, my husband or my wife or whatever, and, and relax. And I don't want to pick up another journal and find out what's the latest. I, mm -hmm. I, I know they do and they should, you know, but not everybody is going to do that. And I think, especially down here in Florida, all y'all folks are going to die anyway. So why should I work so hard? That's the attitude I get, but we're not going to go there. So no. we, we went to a different doctor. Um, and nobody ever said that, but <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. I'm sorry. We went, we went over, um, but it's time for bed. Well, if not for me, I'm going to go watch TV with my husband and finish my little bit of wine here. And 
next week um yeah next week we'll talk about life and the good things the bad things what we can do to improve our health and where are we missing like what everybody can help me with this list and see where we go we'll have more of a chat next week um i'll be running i'll be running in from tampa we're going to tampa on monday and staying overnight at the hard rock casino because we like casinos and it's our anniversary so happy anniversary thanks anniversary early well, you could tell me next week because it's next Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, well, we're going out on Monday so I can be home for Zoom on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, well. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Gail, Mary. Yep. Good to see y'all. See you next week. Okay. Everybody have a good week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.